हाई गाइज हाउ आर यू होप यू आर डूइंग वेल वेलकम टू माई चैनल एग्रीकल्चर मेक स्ट्रॉन्ग टूडे आई कैन विथ जान इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक कॉल्ड टेन इम्पॉर्टेंट गवर्नमेंट स्कीम्स इन एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर ई नॉम ई नॉम इज ए इलेक्ट्रॉनिक नेशनल एग्रीकल्चर मार्केट इट इज ए पैन इंडिया इलेक्ट्रॉनिक ट्रेडिंग पोर्टल विच नेटवर्क द एग्जिस्टिंग ए पी एम सी मंडेज टू क्रिएट ए यूनिफाइड नेशनल मार्केट फॉर एग्रीकल्चर कमोडिटीज द स्मॉल फार्मर्स एग्री बिजनेस कंसोर्टियम इज द लीड एजेंसी फॉर इम्प्लीमेंटिंग द ई नॉम अंडर द एजिस ऑफ मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर एंड फार्मर्स वेलफेयर गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया The main vision of the enorm is to promote the uniformity in agriculture marketing and also by streamlining of processes across the integrated markets removing the asymmetrical information between the buyers and sellers without involvement of the middleman and promoting the real time price discovery based on the actual demand and supply the mission enorm is showing the integration of apmcs across the country through a common online market platform to facilitate the pan india trade in agriculture commodities providing the better price through transparent auction process for the quality of produce along with the timely online payment we can see like flowchart of the enorm process where enorm process first starts with the pre cleaning and the grading and bagging of the agriculture produce where the farmers comes to the e market along with their produce and they enter the gate entry along after the gate entry they have the unique lot id with the details about the commodity along with the aadhar card seeded bank account details for depositing the money after sale of the produce after this they follow the process assaying and grading of a lot and assaying it a specific grade next coming to the produce displayed on the auction platform after the assaying it comes to the auction platform for physical verification and online display of the grade and sample after that auction online bidding begins at 9:30 am and ends at 12 pm both by the local and distant traders online auction closes at 12:10 pm and the highest bidder wins the lot after that uh, the post auction activity electronic weighing sale bill sale bill generation the buyer transfers the amount online to the account of the enum which is transferred to the commission agent after deduction of market fee etc commission agent pays the former delivery by commission agent to bid winner e permit coming to the national mission for sustainable agriculture nmsa the national mission for sustainable agriculture has been formulated for enhancing the agriculture productivity especially in rain fed areas focusing on the integrated farming water use efficiency soil health management and synergizing resource converse, conservation where sustaining agriculture productivity depends upon quality and availability of natural resources like soil and water agriculture growth can be sustained by promoting conservation and sustainable use of this scarce natural resources through appropriate location specific measures in indian agriculture remains predominantly rain fed covering about 60% of the country's net zone area where thus the conservation of natural resources in conjunction with development of rain fed agriculture holds the key to meet demands for food grain in the country nmsa will cater the key dimensions of water use efficiency nutrient management and livelihood diversification through adoption of sustainable development pathways by progressively shifting to environmental friendly technologies 
adoption of energy efficient equipments conservation of natural resources irrigated irrigated uh, land should be also focused and integrated farming where improved crop seeds livestock and fish cultures pest management improved farm management practices will be included coming to the schemes under nmsa where rainfed area development where rad is being implemented by rfs where rfs is rainfed farming system division we are coming to the rad let us discuss some of the points related to the rad where rad is the one of the component of national mission for sustainable agriculture the main concept is cluster based development to promote integrated farming system which is culturally and socially acceptable to the local community and also the main objective of the rad is to focus on integrated farming water use efficiency soil health management and synergizing the resource conservation the strategy of rad is the conservation of natural resources in the conjunction with the development of rainfed agriculture sustainable use of this available natural resources through the appropriate location specific measures promote the integrated farming system and also the value added activities incorporating the greenhouse vermicompost vegetative barriers apiculture etc coming to the soil health management soil health management is being implemented by inm division integrated nutrient management coming to the submission on agroforestry submission on us about paramparagat krishi vikas yojana which is the main scheme related to the agriculture paramparagat krishi vikas yojana is being implemented by inm division and soil and land use survey of india being implemented by rfs division and national rainfed area authority being implemented by rfs division coming to the mission agri organic value chain development in north eastern region which is being implemented by inm division the national center for organic farming were being implemented by integrated nutrient management division and central fertilizer quality control and training institute implemented by integrated nutrient management division coming to the important scheme pradhan mantri krishi sinchai yojana let us discuss about this scheme in detail coming to the major vision of the pradhan mantri krishi sinchai yojana is to ensure the access to some means of protective irrigation to all agriculture farms in the country let us know about per drop more crop for for a single drop the crop should be covered more the main aim of the pradhan mantri krishi sinchai yojana you should observe is har khet ko pani which was given by prime minister narendra modi prime minister krishi sinchai yojana through this scheme the government of india is committed to accord high priority to the water conservation and its management it is mainly focusing on the water conservation and its management next its effect has been formulated with the vision of extending of coverage of irrigation not only uh, the high priority to water conservation and its management but it also gives the coverage of irrigation area to be extended har khet ko pani and improving the water use efficiency for more crop per drop in a focused manner with end to end solution on the source creation distribution management field and application and extension activities coming to some of the objectives of the pradhan mantri krishi sinchai yojana 
where broad objectives of BMKS were included like achieve convergence of investment in the irrigation at the field level, enhancing the physical access of water on the farm and expand cultivable area under assured irrigation, harket ko pani de, integration of water source distribution and its efficient use to make best use of water through appropriate technologies and practices and also improve on form water use efficiency to reduce the wastage and increase availability both in duration and extent coming to the precise irrigation and water saving technologies more crop per drop and also it is focusing on the recharge of aquifers and introducing the sustainable water conservation practices awareness ensure the integrated development of rain fed areas where by using the watershed approach towards water and soil conservation regeneration of groundwater arresting runoff providing lively options and other nrm activities and also majorly promoting the extension activities relating to the water harvesting how to water harvest and water management and crop alignment for the farmers in detail and also gross root field functionaries and also exploring the reusing the treated waste water for peri-urban agriculture and attracting the greater private investments in irrigation coming to the some of the program components involved in the Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sinchai Yojana where some of them are accelerated irrigation benefit program where it focuses on the faster completion of ongoing major and medium irrigation including national projects and also included to the Harketko Harketko Pani where it shows creation of new water resources through minor irrigation and repair, restoration and renovation of water, water harvesting structures. Coming to the coming to the per, more crop per drop. It shows the preparation of the state and district irrigation plans and also promoting the water efficient conveyance and precision water application devices like drip and like sprinklers like sprinklers and rain guns will be used coming to the next next involved is water shed development it is also most important to the farmers where the effective management of runoff water and improved soil and moisture conservation activities such as ridge area ridge ridge area treatment drainage line fire treatment rainwater harvesting in situ moisture conservation and other allied activities on watershed basis In this slide, you can observe the Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sinchai Yojana, the national mission to improve the farm productivity and also to ensure the better utilization of the resources in the country and 31.03 lakh hectares covered under micro irrigation in Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sinchai Yojana. And also it is focusing on the convergence of investment in irrigation at the feed levels. Coming to the Paramparagat Krishi Vikas Yojana where Paramparagat Krishi Vikas Yojana is an elaborated component of soil health management of major project national mission of sustainable agriculture where Krishi 
परंपरागत कृषि विकास योजना इट इज एन इनिशियेटिव टू प्रमोट दी ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग इन द कंट्री विच वॉज लॉन्च बाय एन डी ए गवर्नमेंट इन टू थाउजेंड फिफ्टीन अकॉर्डिंग टू द स्कीम फार्मर्स विल बी इनकरेज टू फॉर्म ए ग्रुप्स एंड क्लस्टर्स एंड टेक एंड टेक टू ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग मेथड्स ओवर लॉर्ज एरिया इन द कंट्री इट एम्स टू टेन थाउजेंड क्लस्टर्स ओवर द नेक्स्ट थ्री ईयर्स एंड ब्रिंग अबाउट फाइव लैक एकर्स ऑफ अग्रीकल्चर एरिया अंडर दि ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग द मेन एम ऑफ दि परंपरागत कृषि विकास योजना टू मेक दि फार्मर्स अवेर अबाउट दि ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग एंड मेकिंग दैम इन ए क्लस्टर्स ऑफ ईच ईच क्लस्टर कंसिस्ट ऑफ ए फिफ्टी फार्मर्स वेर एंड रीचिंग दि फाइव लैक एकर्स ऑफ अग्रीकल्चर एरिया अंडर ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग इन कमिंग नेक्स्ट थ्री ईयर्स एंड ऑलसो After the clusters or group must, uh, which is having 50 farmers, they are willing to take up organic farming under the Paramparagat Krishi Vikas Yojana and possess a total area of at least 50 acres. Each farmers enrolling in this scheme will be provided rupees 20,000 per acre by the government spread over the three years of time. and coming to the coming to the scheme envisages where the paramparagat krishi vikas yojana it has some of them like promotion of commercial organic production through certified organic farming the scheme envisages to produce where the produce will be the pesticide residue free and will contribute to improve the health of the consumer and also it will raise farmers income and create the potential market for the traders it will motivate the farmers for natural source mobilization for input production coming to the program implementation 50 or more farmers will form a cluster of cluster of 50 acres of land to take up organic farming and every farmer will be getting 20000 per acre for the production and distribution of the produce the 10000 clusters will be formed covering of 5 lakh acre area in coming 3 years which is discussed in the previous slide creation of better links to the market and also the certification of organic produce will be implemented in this scheme in this program implementation some of the components and patterns of assistance will be followed like adoption of participatory guarantee system certification through cluster approach and and also through adoption of organic village for manure management and biological nitrogen harvesting through cluster approach coming to the pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana where pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana is the government sponsored crop insurance scheme that integrates multiple stakeholders on a single platform the pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana was launched on 18 february 2016 by prime minister narendra modi is an insurance service for the farmers for their yields it is it was formulated in line with one nation one scheme theme by replacing earlier two schemes which are having earlier like national agriculture insurance scheme and modified national agriculture insurance scheme by incorporating the best features coming to the objectives the major objective of the pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana is to provide the insurance coverage and financial support to the farmers in the event of failure of any the any of the notified crops as a result of natural calamities pest and diseases and also to stabilize the income of the farmer 
and to ensure their continuance in the farming and also the to encourage the farmers to adopt innovative and modern agriculture practices to ensure flow of credit to the agriculture sector coming to the some of the points like highlighting the scheme where there will be a uniform premium of only 2% to be paid by farmers for all kharif crops and also for the rabi crops there will be 1 point there will be 1 point 5 percentage and the premium rates will be like this in the case of annual commercial and horticultural crops the premium to be paid by farmers will be only 5% there is no upper limit on the government subsidy even if balance permit is 90% it will be borne by the government and coming to the major major highlight of the uh, scheme will be the insurance scheme where it is giving the financial support to the farmers and the use of technology will be encouraged to a great extent and through pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana is a replacement of scheme of uh, what we observed in the national scheme national agricultural insurance scheme and national agricultural insurance scheme modified national agricultural insurance scheme it is observed and farmers to be covered all farmers growing notified crops in a notified area during the season who have insurable interest in the crops are eligible and coming to the risk covered in this scheme in any scheme it will be having some advantages and some disadvantages to the farmers if the farmers followed in a right way they'll be getting advantages and some of the areas covered in the scheme will be yield loss how yield loss the standing crops on notified area basis compressive risk insurance is provided to cover yield loss due to non preventable risks such as natural fire and lightning storm hail storm and cyclone typhoon risk risk due to flood inundation and landslides pest diseases will be covered in the case where the majority of the insured farmers of notified area having intent to sow plant and in curd expenditure for the purposes are prevented from sowing and planting the insured crop due to adverse weather condition shall be eligible for indemnity claims up to maximum 25% of the sum insured and some of the farmers can apply in the online for the crop insurance at an link which is which will be available in the internet now we can see the scheme related to the storage where gramin bandaran yojana where the gramin bandaran yojana is a capital investment subsidy scheme which works towards the construction and renovation of godowns in the rural areas this scheme can also be availed by the rural godowns which will be positioned in various food parks and this scheme was announced in 2000 this scheme was announced in 2001 and it is a capital investment subsidy scheme for renovation and construction of rural government godowns and coming to the objectives of this scheme first objective they create scientific storage capacity with allied facilities in the rural areas they mainly concentrate on the rural areas for the storage capacity coming to the next point to meet the requirements of the farmers 
for the storing form produce processed and form produce and agriculture inputs and also for promoting of grading promoting of grading standardization quality control of agriculture produce for to improve their marketability coming to the next point preventive preventing the distress sale immediately after the harvest by providing the facility of fledge financing and marketing credit by strengthening the agriculture marketing infrastructure in the country coming to the some of the points like where the features in the salient features of gramin bandaran yojana are like size of the godown where size of the godown includes includes like the owner has to decide the capacity of his or her godown and the subsidy for the scheme will be for, provided for minimum potential of 100 lots lots and maximum of 30000 lots maximum of 30000 lots and a small rural godown will be of 50 tons 50 tons capacity is also qualified under this scheme on the basis of topography and coming to the next salient coming to the next salient feature which will be having the pledge loan where pledge loan shows the interest rates and loans amount pledge period are based on the RBI and N NABARD guidelines coming to the next feature where conditions where conditions go down should be robust in terms of their structure for storage of agriculture produce and go downs will have the capacity to store around 1000 tons must be accredited by the central warehousing corporation coming to the next salian feature location where go downs must be constructed outside the limits of municipal corporation also any godowns promoted by the ministry of ministry of food processing industries located at the food parks are also eligible under this scheme coming to the next salient feature credit link assistance link assistance credit link assistance where subsidy linked to institutional credit is available for the project uh, financed by the following like urban cooperative banks regional rural banks commercial banks northeastern development financial uh, corporation state cooperative agriculture and rural banks state cooperative banks agriculture development finance companies the credit facility will be extending for the construction cost of boundary walls grading platform packaging internal road internal drainage system in addition to quality certification and warehousing facilities coming to the next salient feature which will cover the capital cost the godown godowns of 1000 tons will be the godowns of 1000 thousand tons will depend on the actual cost or cost of project appraised by bank or rupees 30 3500 per ton which ever is lower the godowns above thousand tons capacity will depend on the actual cost or cost of project appraised by the bank or rupees 1500 which ever is lower and coming to the salient feature of subsidy the subsidy rate is as follows 25% of project cost for performers and corporatives subject ceiling of rupees 2.25 crore subsidy and 33.33% of project cost for scs and sts entrepreneurship and projects in hilly areas object to ceiling on 3 crores and 25% of project cost for godown renovation aided by ncdc and also 15% of 
project cost for individuals corporations subject to ceiling on rupees 1.35 crores subsidy and also the salient future security mortgage of land mortgage of land and godowns these are the some of the salient features will be observed in this scheme coming to the livestock insurance scheme where this scheme aims to provide protection mechanism to the farmers and cattle rearers against any eventual loss of their animals due to death and to demonstrate the benefit of the insurance of the livestock to the people and popularize it with the ultimate goal of attaining the qualitative improvement in the livestock and their products this scheme will provide the protection mechanisms to the farmers and also for the cattle rearers against their loss of their animals and some of the animals covered are indigenous cross breeds milch animals pack animals like horses donkeys mules camels ponies cattle buffaloes and buffalo males and other livestock like goat sheep pigs rabbit yak and mithya etc are covered under the this component coming to the central assistance the benefit of the subsidy is to be restricted to the five animals per beneficiary per household for all animals except sheep goat pig and rabbit in the case of sheep goat pig and rabbit the benefit of the subsidy is the restricted based on cattle unit and one cattle unit is equal to 10 animals that is a total of 50 animals the beneficiary has less than 5 animals per one cattle and can also avail the benefit of subsidy coming to the scheme on fisheries training and extension it was launched to provide the training for fishery sector so as to assist in undertaking fisheries extension programs extensively coming to the next scheme national scheme on welfare of fishermen this scheme was launched to provide the financial assistance to the fishers fishers for construction of house community hall for recreation and common working place it also aims to install tube wells for drinking water and assistance during lean period through saving come relief component uh, the main important of this scheme to give the financial assistance to the fishermen and also coming to the next scheme micro irrigation fund the government approved a dedicated rupees 5000 crore fund to bring more land under micro irrigation as a part of its objective to boost the agriculture production and farmers income the fund has been set up under nabard which will provide this amount to the states on concessional rate of interest which will promote ultimately the micro irrigation where it, it uh, currently has a coverage of only 10 million hectares as against the potential of 70 million hectares through this all schemes it is most important for the farmers for the financial assistance and also for getting the more benefits if you like this video please subscribe to my channel